Hey, thanks for hitting the button to listen to this. It's a really good one with Nick Dumas. We learn about a little bit about sitting on the pin, doing something uncomfortable. It bleeds into a whole bunch of different ways of life. It's a really good listen. Make sure you're listening to this one. It's a great one. Y'all ready for this? Welcome to the Dan DeVerna Podcast, where we talk about business, life, and how to win it both. Hey, before we get started, actually, I was trying to express to him that story about politics that you told me. Yeah. That that I've told the story 40 times, but I keep bastardizing it. Yeah. Tell Nick the story about your view on the politics and stuff. Well, you know, politics is easy to understand because there's nothing to understand. So I, I what I try to do is I try to take the amount of people in my life that lie, cheat, and steal, you know, from me in some shit, which, you know, some way, shape, or form uh, to a minimum. And what I found is, is that, you know, people that rise above what I do, which is, you know, a working man, and you're a working man, whatever. And when they get to that level where they're actually at the foundational side of like being a politician or whatever, I find that uh, not a lot of it's, uh, is, is going to be as, as true as you want it to be. So what I try to do is I just, I just don't spend my time worrying about it because it's all just a, it's a fallacy. And in doing so, you just you find that frustration is just going to fester anger, and and be, you'll be frustrated because there's no truth. I mean, you you know the old story, right? It's like one lie compounds to another lie because that's all you have. You once you start that road, so I just it doesn't make sense to me. I just stay away from it. And I tell you what, I don't vote. I don't have TV at my home. I don't have internet. I don't have anything. And I just I it's it's the best thing for me, you know. So like I said, the, the amount of people that do that, I just keep them out of my life, and I and I flourish. So it's, it's the way I do it. Yeah. Wait, you don't have internet at your house? No, I don't have internet or, or, or television. I understand the TV part, but the internet's another level. Yeah, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't like any. I just read. That's it. Oh. Yeah. What do you read? Sorry. No, um, it's good. I like, I like to encompass a few different things. I mean, I, you know, uh, he's got me more into the finance stuff, like Ray Dahlia's book right now. I'm, I'm, I'm into That's that. Close. Yeah, I'm in that book. I like that book. Uh, it's raw. It's good. I like it. Um. Right now, I'm just all about consciousness, man. I'm finding myself. Um, I found that on a day-to-day basis, it is so easy not to live because you're not conscious, right? I mean, I, I went through years in the same, like a salmon. I'm in the same stream going against the current every day. And I found myself fine. I'm successful. We're doing good. I, you know, I, have, I live a good life. I'm healthy. It's a blessing. But, man, I just wasn't living. I mean, just completely. So once you find consciousness and you start to be gracious in the generous present moment, you you really just start to own things. And, you know, so I'm doing that right now. And I found that there's no amount of success that I've made up to this point. Whether you call it success or not, it's success to me. You know, from my background, where I'm at now, I feel like I'm doing good things. Um, I could do much better. I mean, it could be much bigger. But I'm, I'm, I am where I am right now. And I feel like right now I'm just starting to live at 42. And it's just, it's unbelievable to get that feeling, truly. It's 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 an enlightening thing, and you once you own it, and you don't even own it, you'll never own it. But once you start to try to own it, and you focus on owning, ge- you know, the the generous generous present moment, like right now, because never know what's going to happen, right? Then you start to let everything wither away. Politics, right? What I did five years ago, I tried to do a restaurant deal, or however long that was ago. Who I'm not a restaurant guy. I was just trying to do things. I mean, I was almost not bored, but bored to be bored. I was trying to be bored, right? And so you start doing that, and, and once you get this, once you start to feel this, you start to own this, and it's just like, um, it's just unbelievable. I mean, it's those tidal waves of happiness, which, you know, is probably more important than anything, if you ask me. It's my personal opinion, though. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's... Uh... You sound like you're down a path of a lot of people I listen to on podcasts. Yeah, well... Or read about, like, I'm a big, like, I just bought, like, all of Ryan Holiday's books, and I'm just, like, reading a lot of stuff by, like, the Stoics and, uh, like, meditations, and it's, like, little tiny principles that aren't revolutionary that you just, like, never look at or right. think about, and they're so simple, and it's, like, creates a better life. Have you ever seen The Secret? Yeah, the secret. So I just got into that. Um, I've been listening to some little things and inserts, and the secret. It, it, it's so elementary, but it's absolutely the most highest form of 
academic, you know, academics you can go into because you really don't own science, history, math. It's always changing. It's a forever changing platform. I mean, we got people tearing down statues in cities now. So history, what's, what's history? History was written. People always ask me, like, Dan's wrote books. Awesome. I'm not that guy. They're like, you should write a book about some stuff. I'm like, you know what? My landscape's so changing. Like, you know, I'm changing my landscape so much. I really just don't want to set my seed in pages, right? If you want to talk to me, like, Dan, we talk on the phone. It's amazing. We have great, and sometimes we have horrible comments, like, quick ones, like, hey, sure. hey you know, I'm busy. But yeah. we get into something, that's my book, man. You know, and, I, and I'm not that guy. I mean, I could if I wanted to sit down and grind it out. But I just don't feel like I own anything except for just, like, this right, this moment right now. And I think that's, you know, and there's a lot of things going on. It's 2020. Lives are changing across the board. You know, but that metric that I have right now, I'm just not ready to, to, to put it on paper. You know what I mean? That's where I'm at. It's interesting, right? For sure. But you sound like, do you know, I mean, like, if you like the secret um, and really the science behind it, because it can be, I think people use the secret for not getting out there asked to do things right, a lot. Right, right. Um, but if you get in the science of that stuff, you, like there's a guy named Dr. Joe Dispenza. I've already done his program. Oh, yeah. That's where I found consciousness. Yeah, I was just saying you sound exactly like Dispenza, and I've yeah. had that in tab six of my internet search for a long time. Oh, yeah, do the Gaia first, G-A-I-A. Yeah, he's 13 lessons on there that'll get you in tune of why it works the way it works, and then you can kind of accept it. Because it's scientifically based. I, I love, you know, science. Of course, I'm a doctor. But, I mean, it's... Damn, so... Wow. Yeah, take your time and sit on that one. That's a really good one. Well, no, like, I've heard... I've probably <clears throat> listened to five or six different podcasts that he's been on. Whether it was, uh, like, Impact Theory or... That's the uh, best one, is Impact Theory. I've watched it. Tom Billy is the best. Yeah, he's just the best. He's the greatest interviewer. Uh, very good um, way better than Lewis Owes but yeah you know, he's, he's, he's good but yeah he's okay he's uh, just prettier I think that's why he gets more views yeah you know I, but Tom is like Tom's rich Tom really has good. no more money <laughs> Tom I think he sold his company for like what 380 million or something like that I think it was a V no I think his I think his sales were overall a billion right but he I don't I know. think he sold out for the, I don't even know yeah, maybe I might be wrong I don't know his whole thing you what's can, his, li- you can his, live off of it yeah a lot of money yeah, he's not swimming in your pool. He's got his own pool. No, he's got not clean. <laughs> pool or a pond. Pond's good for he you. He doesn't you know need I mean? my hot tub. Yeah. No. <laughs> he's not at our house. It's a nice hot tub, but he doesn't yeah, need it. Yeah, he's not at our house. That's right. <laughs> so, it's fun. Well, yeah, well, it's good, man. All right, sorry. That's yeah. the black and white version of this one. No, it's great. No, that's yeah. fine, no, man. That's sure. no, that's fine, man. No, for sure. That's good. The, uh, that was probably the tipping point, because I, I had, um, <sighs> I've, because it sounds insane. Not the present moment, but... You watch some of the videos of people uh, having physical transformation from it and stuff, mm-hmm. and it's yeah. pretty wild. Have you ever gotten into meditation before? Yeah. Uh, you have gotten one. I've just gotten my what? a meditation. Have you gotten a, 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 a medit? Have you have you been in a meditative state? Oh. Have a heightened quantum effect? No, I was. I okay. So yeah. I've had I've had two. Can't believe I had them. Wasn't even trying for them. It hit me in Miami. I called you. Remember, and I told you, craziness. So once you get there. You've been in a meditative state. Have you hit meditation? I have. Okay. So he knows. He does way. He's very, very structured, which is good. I'm just not that guy, right? So, uh, but I've tried. I've been trying every night to do breathing exercises. Get it. And sometimes again. Sometimes I go. So twice in the last four and a half months. <laughs> but when you get to that first one, f- forget it. It's you're gonna be hounding for it. It is a it is a breath of fresh air. It's scary. Is all shit. Don't get me wrong. Your first one, I jumped out of the bed in Miami. Like, oh, I'm getting out of this. I didn't like that feeling because I didn't know if I was getting out of it, right? Mm-hmm. That height, So I jumped out of it. I went, man, why did I do that? Why did I get out of it? What, what am I thinking? I laid right back down. I got into my breathing again. Started doing my Wim Hof breathing. By the way, I'm doing my cold water thing. Love it. Best thing I ever did, by the way. Good. Thank you for that. I yeah. appreciate your you bet. inspiration. No, that's the best. Yeah, you do the cold water too? Yeah. It's like off it, the charts, I, man. Yeah, I'm actually like, liking it now. I look forward to it. I still start hot and get cold, but I'm, I'm not, the, I'm yeah. not the warrior of getting into the cold one, and I, I'm not that strong yet. Oh, it's I don't do that either. I take a nice warm shower, then I just get the cold. But what I was saying was before that is once you get to your first white circle between your two eyes, and it starts to, and you get in that state, and you can actually start to get into the operating system. <laughs> it's wild, bro. Yeah. I'm gonna hold it like the second one I got into. 
was absolutely a mistake. Like, I wasn't even working on that. I was doing it because I started to think I was getting a sore throat a little bit. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do my Wim Hof exercises, hyper my body. I took a bunch of vitamins. I'm like, my, my immune system is going to kick the shit out of this thing real quick. And then I'll just go to bed and I'll wake up a champion. I did, by the way. That helped. Wim Hof saved me from getting a sore throat, which is awesome. Or I did through Wim Hof methodology. And I got into one again. This one was even more height than the last one, and it really freaked me out. And I'm, I'm being a baby. I mean, so you shouldn't be fearful of anything. That's in all the books, right? Uh, I got out of that one on purpose, but that one was really, really deep. That one was wiggly lines and shit. And, and that's was, like the you're talking about through like the thirty breaths and then yeah, the, yeah, the, the yeah. Exhale hold twice, the... twice it got me. I squeezed my pineal gland hard enough, like from just doing the breathing, squeezing. I so I start at you know my my uh, pelvic floor the testicles. I squeeze it all the way up to my second chakra, to my third one, to my fourth one. At first, I can only do two in a row, and I'd lose concentration. Now I'm all the way up to, like, my thyroid, right, which is, like, five. So, and then I got the pituitary gland. I must have hit it, and when I squeezed it, it threw me into a meditative state. And on the first one, I got in the operating system. The second one was operating, like, by itself. I, it was squiggly lines. I was like, yeah, I'm getting out of that one. Like, I'm not ready. I didn't read enough book. I didn't read en enough material to sit back on that. From what I heard is, and I think you've even said it before, you just kind of just do it, let it happen, right? I, I I got work to do, but can you control your meditations? Yeah, it's a little different. Like I don't, I haven't done a lot of that breathing like that. Like it, I'm more of a, or that form of breathing. So oh, the different. The stuff I do is a little bit different. I've done a little bit of that, but I haven't done the way that you've done it. Mine was is different, but I, I that they would call it an enlightened state. I don't feel enlightened. But, like, you go to a different, yeah. This one feels like really somebody different. put electronic helium through your body and you're floating, right? And and, yeah. you're, and you're squeaking. It's, it's like, it's crazy. It's a really, for me, I, I'm not saying anybody else has had these effects. Right. And, um, but it is, it's real. Yeah. And you can really, you can look at yourself. It's, it's amazing. Human potential is like less than 1%. What they use. Yeah. I mean the ninety the ninety nine point nine percent that people aren't using is the is the money, and people that are using it you can see it. You ever talked to a billionaire? Have you ever no. talked to a real bill a liquid billionaire? Nope. Okay, so the whole room has a different light. They're 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 vibrating at a different level. I was in a room with my very good friend. You know him. I'm not going to say names. You know, three hundred million in real estate. You know, he probably makes a million bucks a month. You know, and he told the other real estate guy, we were trying to make an acquisition on a large piece of property. You know what I mean? A million square feet, huge, big piece of property. He sits down, and I hear my best friend say to him, I'll tell you what, and I'm half the deal. We'll, we'll pay more than you're asking if I can get one hour a week with you on the phone for one year. More. We're like, you know, he's like, just name a number. We'll pay up on it. We just want an hour a week with you in a room. We'll fly to you or we'll fly you in privately. And he, you know, he just, the menorah, he says, ah, no. He says, that's <laughs> and you hear your friend who is leaps and bounds in business. You know, he's older than me. He's done. I mean, he's, he knows him. He does, he does great in business. Would you say? He's great. Yeah. He does great. Started off just like me and him, which is, is by my, you know, modest means. And, you hear him say something like that, it's because there's a different vibration in the room that you're not paying attention to. And once you see it, you see how he operates and moves his body and how he was talking to us and how he was focused on one thing, and that was the business at hand. He didn't run off on all kinds of curtails and primrose paths trying to give us some who he was and what he's done. It was clear cut. When you have that first conversation, it's like your first meditation. If I ever get an, I was supposed to, I was supposed to be with Kevin. What's the guy from Shark Tank's name? Oh, that guy. Yeah. So the same guy I was talking about, my good friend and your buddy, invited me through his financial team, um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the guys up in Detroit. I don't like saying names, by the way. Sorry about that. Um, and they invited me to go meet with Kevin Leary privately. So four guys for one hour. And I, and I didn't, and I couldn't make it because of what's currently, you know, I got a lot of stuff going on and I couldn't make it, but I will never miss one again. This one I had to because of some family stuff, but no. And if I can, because my buddy loves him, by the way, I just want to let you know, he's like, he 
So you tell Dan next time we meet with somebody, he's gonna invite, and we're gonna bring you. So you can sit Excellent. down. Yeah, Amen. it's awesome. A bil- billionaire like this guy had 11 million square feet on Wacker Drive, and you know I think he had like another nine million square feet in you know West um, Manhattan. I mean, astounding businessman, astounding. It, when that happens, it changes your whole mindset. I was always looking for the next thing to grab. Now I'm looking for the next thing to master. You know what I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. it's just really, really, really good stuff. Well, let's get started because I got to get some food. Yeah, cool, man. Well, I'm here with Nick Dumas. And uh, Nick's been a good friend of mine for a long time. Bought Nick's house over, I don't, I don't even know if we were, we don't really drink much. So I don't think we were drinking, but we were at a martini bar, probably drinking soda waters or something. Very fancy like that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we bought, I bought Nick's house. Yeah. Over seven over years ago of, or uh, something. Sparkling water. Over a glass of sparkling water. I think it so. was something like, uh, yeah. I'm going to ask you if I can buy your house. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I said, well, that's a change. That's a change. That's of interesting. Pace. Really? Okay. It's not for sale, Dan. And yeah. Dan right. looked at me and says, well, I don't know. Well, yeah. Some things are for sale. Like, Just... Yeah. Right. <laughs> so anyways, that yeah. happened. Mm-hmm. Um, but Nick is, well, Nick, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? There's a lot of layers to Nick Dumas Yeah. and I don't want to leave anything out. So I'll kind of let you kind of, we'll start with the chiropractor thing, but that's just kind of where it begins and sure. it still isn't close to being an end yet. So yeah, let, let's hear it go. I think from, you know, conception to, you know, the birth was just one thing. I think from birth to now, I think I ran the same pace as most, you know, most people, you know good decisions, bad decisions, no decisions. You know what I mean? I've one done that. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. now here I am, I'm 42 years old. Uh, who am I? I am not who I was at one time. Um, by trade, I am a chiropractor. Um, you know, uh, fell in love with chiropractic when I was seven. Wanted to do it. Matter of fact, I don't know if anybody played hockey or anything, but we used to have hockey cards we'd take to Canada, and you would change them at the center ice, you know, mm-hmm. with other teams. So you'd play a team from Russia or Poland, you'd have a little hockey card, your name would be on it, right? And so everybody else is, would say, you know, your name, your, da- your date of birth, you know, your parents' name, what do you want to be when you grow up, and who's your favorite hockey player, right, on the back of the card. It was kind of just, it was they were cool. It was a great idea, actually. I think they should still do that, but they, they probably don't. And um, I remember everybody would say, fireman or, you know, because all my friends were on the team, you know, you change cards with them too at the end of the year. And, <clears throat> and and in mine, it said chiropractor. And the way that happened was, is I was about the age of seven, I think. And, you know, 50% of everything you say of the past is usually not exactly accurate. So when I start to use numbers and, and names and ages, just push those aside and go with the base of the, the story. Yeah. Uh, I, had, right I had asthma. Um, I, I don't remember it all that much. Um, I you know, suffered a severe brain injury when I was 17, so I lost a lot of my childhood. But this is what my parents have fed me forth and or f- forward um, from my childhood. But uh, so had asthma. My uncle was in chiropractic school, started, um, you know, treating me actually on the floor at home because my parents taking care of him. And they found that my asthma, my asthma started to kind of like, it wasn't as bad. It was, it was, you know, not bad at all. And then it just kind of went away. Well, then I made a team in Detroit. Go to Detroit every night. I'm not getting treated by my uncle, who's a chiropractor. I start having breathing issues again. Now it's sport-induced asthma because now it's not seven years old because I was going to adjust it the whole time. Yeah. But 13 years old, I couldn't go as I was playing for this team up in Detroit. And here it comes back. Now it's sport-induced because it's 13. Let it go. It'll go away. Never went away. Suffered almost three-quarters of the season. Okay. Um, next thing you know, I, my dad mom, it must have hit an epiphany. They're like, oh. Uh, What's missing? You know what's going on because I was using drugs at the time. So we're, we have our, we have the wonderful uh, mascot and bodyguard here. He's my bodyguard, Santino. Say hi. And so next thing you know, uh, my dad and mom says something like, "Well, what about?" It might have been the chiropractor. I went back, started getting adjusted. Boom, went again. Ever since that moment at thirteen, I wanted to do it. I mean, seven, I really wanted to do it because I was really bad then. Thirteen, it was manageable. You know, this is what they tell me. I'm like I said, I'm not. I'm not putting all this uh, on paper, but, and so, but I still remember that, that card, they show me the card, like, this is the card you want to be this. And that was it, man. I wanted to be a chiropractor and I knew it. That's had, awesome. Yeah. I had a full boat to go to a medical school. I passed it up. Um, it was the university of, um, um, I just won't say any names, but South, South Florida university is a uh, university down there. But so that's how it came to be. That's how I became a chiropractor. That's really what gave me my legs to do other things, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, uh, in my life. But, so where, where do you 
throw most of your energy and weight around now? Like, what are you doing with most of that? You know, I got the ships on the on the sea. They're rolling pretty good. They're not perfect. You know, mm-hmm. we're still turning on the bilges. We're still knocking water out. We're still, you know, running a thinner, cleaner ship. Um, I work on that. I focus on taking costs off the back end, not by hurting people or lowering people's pay, but I look at interest rates and what I've been doing with all my businesses, you know, the real estate, the them. And what I, and when I do that, that's kind of my focus right now. But what I'm really focused on, and, and I think most people run into this uh, sometime between the ages like you know, hopefully, hopefully 15 or five years old and, and 20, and not 30 and 42 like me, is they start to find themselves and start to be more gracious of that present, that generous present moment. So right now, I'm really focusing on on me. You know, like I'm, mm-hmm. you know, I'm just focusing on on, on making it a better fitting suit for me. And so that's where I'm at right now. But as far as business goes, it's definitely in the day-to-day operations. You know, I'm running a leaner, thinner operation than ever, less employees. Not by chance. I want to give people jobs, but I give them jobs other ways. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's where I'm at right now. Sure. So are you doing a little bit of chiropractic stuff, a lot? Yeah. So I love chiropractic. It's my passion. And so I see people uh, five hours on Mondays and Wednesdays. So 10 hours a week, I dedicate that. I have a concierge practice. Uh, it's called Elite Concierge Medical. Um, we have medical and chiropractic mm-hmm. in-house. Uh, so we charge a nominal fee, $99 a month. It's unlimited care. I mean, no charge for exams, nothing. You know what I mean? So uh, it's $99. People love it. I did it to get people healthy because I was blessed to be doing um, good with some other things. And I wasn't worried about this being, you know, monetary uh, value to me. I was just wanting to do it because I love, you know, spearheading new things and fighting new cases and having fun. And so I do that 10 hours a week, 40 hours a month. And, and I love it. And it's a great company. It's really, it's probably the best way to practice, to be honest with you. I've had uh, insurance practice that was absolutely ginormous. You remember my old oh, practice? Yeah, yeah it's we a big had a deal. I had a real, I had a real practice. I didn't have one that wasn't, you know, recordable on paper. Um, it, it was real. It was huge, and it was the, it was going to be the death of me. So I got rid of that, of course, because I found that working with third party payers was something that I couldn't handle as a businessman. And you mm-hmm. find that in business, right? Like you've worked with some people where they come back to you two years after you let them go, or they left you, and they're like, "Can we come back?" And you're like, "Yeah, well, no." You yeah. know what I mean? Like, right. you, you do that, right? Sure. I've done that. You do that more and more as you kind of mature in life, and and that's happened to me up to this point. You know what I mean? With with that situation. Yeah. And I, I love it. So I, I did it as, for fun. And Santino just wants your attention. Yeah. Go lay down, buddy. <laughs> so that's where I'm at right now. When you think about, like, you know, I don't want to go too deep on the COVID stuff because it just seems like it's what everybody kind of wants to talk about. But um, any thoughts on that as a doctor in the arena of – you know, not not specific to the disease or or to that, but just maybe the mindset. And I mean, I think people are looking for they're looking for direction. They're looking to to have um, have someone something to believe in. Mm-hmm. You know, the the messages are so mixed. Yeah, it's <laughs> I mean, crazy. It's it's, it's the cr- it, it. I keep waiting. You know, my grandpa's ninety seven, and I still talk to him all the time, and. You know, it's almost like one of those stories that he should be telling me about when he was six. Right. You know, back when I was six, let me tell you what happened. Exactly. Except that it's not when he was six. It's when he was 97. Right. And I'm 48. And it's it's just cr- the craziest thing with no consistent message, com- completely a mess from every direction. And people don't really know, you know, what to believe and what not to believe. And it's scary. It's terrifying. You know, people are dying. Mm-hmm. For sure, right. but yet, you know, it's hard to understand, and everybody's got a little different stance on it. In fact, I th- feel like I have a different stance mm-hmm. depending upon the day. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's just you know, I think part of that's the information that's being, and you know, I mean, I don't watch the news. Uh, right, I'm not a political person. I don't vote. I know you guys can throw all kinds of comments at the bottom of this page, and I think I'll live and I'll be fine for tomorrow. But, um, you know, let's talk about COVID. My cousin's a pulmonologist. Um, you know, my wife's father's a pulmonologist. My cousin was the uh, the head medical director for the pulmonary division of the largest 
or the, um, excuse me, the busiest hospital with COVID in the country at the time. And um, we grew up together. You know, she's a first cousin. So when she w- when this all started in March, by the way, we've been servicing people with very, very, very close symptoms for months before that, right? And we don't know if they were related to the actual SARS COVID, you know, or you know, Corona SARS coronavirus uh, strain, but. You know, you talk to her every day, which I was doing because she wasn't leaving the hospital very much. Mm-hmm. And you you start to write things out and you look at it and you find out that I think everybody was just kind of at a loss when this whole thing popped off. I think it was very, very – it came it with such a tidal wave effect. I think that it was a lot of water for everybody to kind of hold or mm-hmm. bear at the time. Yeah. And I think that I think not only the cohorts were wrong, which is the groups of people – uh, put into you know different you know what a cohort is so yeah. I think that was wrong I think treatment methodology inside of the hospitals was at a loss because they didn't really know what to do with this type of strand that was causing you know acute respiratory distress syndrome you know what I mean it's so ARDS so I tell people this I think it started off very rocky and I think that it's still just as rocky with a little more enlightenment but I don't really know what to say about COVID. I mean, I will tell you it's wrong from the get-go. People were buying toilet paper. I have no idea where that comes from. And that was national news for many, and many weeks that people were buying toilet paper out at stores. How is that news about a virus? I mean, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I, it, it, it's, it's very odd. It's very odd. I mean, the whole thing is Everything's strange. odd. It, you know, one piece shutting, after another. They're shutting down our country for a disease that has a 99.064 percent success rate for survival if it was two percent it's too much but 0.084 for the first nine months and now 0.064 i mean in 2017 18 and don't take all these numbers exact because i read a lot of medical information but i'm putting some numbers and dates out there for you so you can look these up most of them are right you do pretty good with this stuff but i'm just letting you know i think there was like 1.7 some million deaths of children under the age of 13 from dysentery i mean where is the where is the pandemic on that I mean, so when you look at this and people that are 65 and older with three comorbidities are starting to fall back and pass away, it's horrible. One death is too many, especially with the amount of medical advancements that we, we have in our possession that aren't being used. We could, you know, we could put those sure. in play. We could probably save people. Um, and I'm not God. I don't know if they would save people. I'm just throwing that out there as a doctor. You read stuff in magazines, up and coming things are, you know, coming down the pipeline and you're, you're intrigued sure. because it's cool stuff, right? And it's not being used. And so... With COVID, I always tell people, you, you it's best not to really go source to source to get your information. It's best just to stick to one source, yeah. right? Common sense. If you don't feel well, stay home. Honestly, I don't care if it's the flu. Dis- I don't care if you have you know, common cold, diarrhea, or influenza. It doesn't matter to me. Right. Stay home. Yeah. I don't care if you're four years old. I don't care if you're 29 years old. And I don't care if you're 133 years old. Other than that, the whole thing in my opinion, and I'm going to use this word previously, is absolutely bananas. Uh, I think that uh, I think they have a lot of explaining to do, and I think that we need to do a better job of being prepared for these types of problems in our country because this was not the first and it's not the last. Right. You know. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting time. I'm I have every expectation. You know, things are going to normalize, and I I think I'm one of the folks and I think there's a, a pretty large group of us that are, are going to come out of this a little bit better than we went into it sure you know it slowed things down enough for some people to be able to you know the pace of life has gotten pretty crazy we let it get a little crazy I am as bad as anybody maybe worse than anybody mm-hmm. at the pace of life just allowing you to just kind of get a little bit a little bit out of control um, just having to check boxes all the time. Like I need to get all these things done. And, um, I think by the forced slowdown to be able to stop, look around, spend, see who you're spending your time with, make sure you're examining your day to day, you know, because as you, I'd like to circle back around to that kind of that living in the moment, which it seems like is, you know, I've known you for a while now. I mean, maybe 10 years, maybe a little longer than that. And you've definitely changed quite a lot. I mean, you look as good as you've ever looked. You look younger than I think you've ever looked. And you're talking in a different way than you've ever talked. 
Sure. And I find that to be really interesting. I think that's the type of thing that, you know, when we start having these talks and we would have talks sometimes as deep as this or sometimes not out on the boat, you know, going one half of a mile per hour on a Saturday morning at at six o'clock in the morning, (laughs) you know, having coffee. And those were some of the best times on the, on the water ever, you know? And, uh, I think it's interesting because I don't think that many people have slowed down enough to have that perspective. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we talked about at some point doing the Wim Hof, uh, Wim Hof is kind of a, you know, I'm a fanboy for Wim Hof. He's a guy that, you know, anybody that doesn't know who he is, you should check him out. He's, uh, um, the ice man and you can put him, check him out on YouTube or, you know, Google him wherever. And he's got tons of records for how much time he can spend in the water. And the psychology behind that, he had a, a wife who was really sick and she took her own life and he was really upset by it and didn't understand it because she loved him. He knew it. He loved her. And, and he's just like, there's something missing. Like, what can I do? And it's been his life passion to kind of figure out how to help people help themselves and so, you know, I've been, I don't even know how long I've been doing it, but I don't take a full cold shower anymore, except when I was in jujitsu and they didn't have any hot water. I was definitely <laughs> oh, taking told me cold, about that one cold water, told, whatever the temperature, the pipes were, was the temperature of my shower right. because it literally had no hot water at all, but whatever the temperature. So in the winter, it would be like you'd be getting hit with like icicles and in the summer it'd be a, you know, it'd be a, like a normal shower. So anyways, but I'll turn down the shower. Anybody that's never done that, you should definitely check out Wim Hof or just at the end of your shower, turn that thing for the last like 10 seconds, turn that thing down from as, as warm as you take a shower to as cold, as cold as you can go without the water shutting off. Yeah. You know, and tell me what it feels like. Like report back, like come back and put the in the comments and tell us a little bit about it because it's pretty awesome. And I'll tell you what, if you're a heavy coffee drinker, you don't need it. <laughs> like you don't. you don't need like, and I drink, I drink some coffee. I drink two to three cups of coffee a day most of the time, mm. but I don't need to drink coffee because I'm like shot out of a cannon it, when I crazy. take a shower like that. It's crazy between that and the breathing yeah. and some of that stuff. It's really cool. I have every expectation that sometime I'm going to, when things normalize at least a little, I'm going to track him down and be in, be in the crowd for I'm one of his. Crowd, yeah. yeah, it's going to be a cool thing. I, I tell you, uh, when you start to look forward to the cold shower is when you really transformed. Because yeah. it's cold no matter what. Like you're not changing the temperature of that shower with your mind. You right. can change your body. Oh, yeah. But that when you first step into it, you are human and it will grab you and let you know. It'll squeeze you by the chest. It'll squeeze you by the arms and by the neck. Your face will get tight. Your forehead will get tight. And it says, hey. This is cold. But right. then when you get out of there, you get out of it and you start to control it and you start to control your breathing when you're in it. I think you kind of look at like this morning, I stepped out to this. I stepped to the side for just a few moments. I turn it all the way down just because this is all Dan told me to do this, by the way. I started this uh, nine days ago and it's the best thing I ever did. Now I look forward to it in the morning. I step into it now and I breathe. I can breathe. Before I couldn't breathe. You know yeah. how that feeling oh, is? I told oh, you I felt like I was believe suffocating. Me. Yeah. And now I'm looking for it. So yeah, definitely listen to, to you know, Dan on that one get on yeah. whims or just do it yourself and yeah it's it's I always just, say it's pay cool. the piper I pay well, you know I could have just stayed in the shower cold but I you know I buy all the programs because yeah. I like to give back you know well he right spent the time. yeah I mean it's that's why I bought uh bought an apple phone it was I read Steve Jobs book and it was like my way to kind of give back a little bit mm-hmm. but back to the cold mm-hmm. shower thing the other thing that it changes and this is just like an a, I've evolved into thinking about how this works. And I don't even, I, I'm just telling you my personal experience, but I can handle the cold now. So we live in Toledo, Ohio, right? Mm-hmm. And it gets cold here. Today it's cold here. Yeah. It's in the twenties. I, yeah. I don't know how cold they'll get tonight. Real cold, right? For sure. Um, I can handle that so much better than I used to be able to handle it. It is completely different than the way it used to be. Like I'm it's telling nine days and it's I changed could, me completely. I nine could days. walk out. I could go, I could jog three miles with a stocking cap and shorts on. I, and and I don't even think I'd be cold. I'm not even sure. I'm not positive. I, I haven't done it, right. but I'm telling you, and that's the type of stuff he does. I'm just telling you, there is something we're way more powerful. And then the meditation stuff helps. I mean, I've literally, I remember standing at a football game out at Genoa and I didn't dress appropriately. It was cold outside and I didn't have a warm enough stuff. And I just remember imagining like, Hey, 
like, you got a furnace right here. Like, let's just throw a couple logs on the fire. And I was just like, literally started like meditating and imagining that I'd kind of have this wood burning. And I, within a couple minutes, I'm like, oh, I'm way better. Warmed up. It's crazy. And the, the, the Tibetan monks and those guys, and that's some of the breathing and all those things. Like, that stuff's so cool. The power that our bodies have, it's, it's unbelievable. And we're really not harnessing it the way we should. Well, I think you know, people at tra- all. I think people transcend their their emotion through outside sources and physical things. I mean, um, how many you're gonna have a Ferrari? How many Ferraris are you gonna have to you know? Over? I'm a well, you're a Ferrari lover. Okay, so you, you know, once you get all those monetary things, I always tell people the best saying I've ever heard. And this is not mine, so I'm not claiming it. But you can sit on top of a mountain and feel nothing, right? And and you can be on top of the world and feel nothing, right? Try sitting on a pin. It's the little things in life that cause the most amount of pain, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So when you grasp the idea of a pin being more treacherous than being on top of a mountain or even getting to the top of a mountain, you'll go back and sit on the pin again because it's the little things that'll make you remember how you got there. Mm. And that's what I like about the cold showers. How comfortable, I mean, how comfortable are you in your house? My house is comfortable. I love Real my house. Yes. Real I love, nice house. I, I love my home and I've made it mine. And, uh, and so I like going there. It's a place where I can be safe and, and, and me and, and the family can relax. And so, you know, you look at that and then you realize why is the cold shower so, shower so important? It's the little things that matter. It's because you don't want to do it. You shall do it. You know what I mean? Stop living in fear for a month. Start focusing on a candle five minutes at a time, just the flame, twice a day for a month. And watch your life change. Forget about money. Forget about your checkbook. You know, forget about your car breaking down. Your daughter, you know, you know, dating a guy you don't like. Forget about all that stuff, because that is the mountain, right? But get on that pin. Feel the pain a little bit. Get back to reality. It's my, that's my favorite. That's my message, man. If you're not doing it, you got to do it now. If you don't want to take a cold shower because you think me and Dan are crazy or Wim Hof's a maniac, that's he, fine. which he is. But that's okay. That's okay though. It is good. I mean, look at the other Jordan. I mean, Jordan's a hyper focused cleaner. I mean, you've read those books, right? Yeah, I mean, for sure. And that's what Wim is. But you do that, and it's so easy to get to that space, and it will change your life indefinitely. Try it for five days, and I'm telling you, you'll like it. If you're anything in that space, if you're if you're getting off the mountain and, and you know wanting to find out if the pin's more painful, yeah, the little things in life. Are there uh, like obviously we're both both into Wim Hof. Are there any books you're reading or other areas or things you're working on or stuff that you think, hey, I think some people should know about this? Yeah. So Dr. Uh, Joe Disp- 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 Dispenza, excuse me. Yeah. Um, is a, is a doctor that I've been following really, really closely. And the reason I follow him is because I uh, did the Carrick Institute of Neurology. It's a functional neurology college. I did that. So I'm really into, you know, neurophysiology and, and, and stuff like that. And quantum is really cool because if you look past neurophysiology or epidemiology or virology, it doesn't matter what you're looking at. You look at the quantum level of the cell and the electron and how it works. It's all scientifics, which I love because I'm a doctor, right? And then you start to break that down and make it simple to digest for people that are not, and you show scientific-based brain scans. I think that's a really, really good place to start. Definitely if you're suffering from anxiety, uh, you're you're hate-mongering yourself or other people, or if you live in a perpetual state of stress, if you look at – if I looked at you and said, I can't stand being around you, I wouldn't be around you now. Back in the day, I might have been around you because you're a financial advisor, you have great advice, you're very, very successful, and I want to pick your brain. But at 42, I'm past that point, and I just want to give to what I want, right? Or to what I – I want to give to what I want to find out about, and I get that from you too. That's why we're really good friends. We talk all the time, but I'm just saying once you you make that turn – it's 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 just an absolute enlightenment, and so do the Wim Hof thing for sure, and um, and definitely sit on the pin as much as possible. I like it. Yeah, I like it. Is there anything else that we should be uh, knowing about Nick, or ways we should follow you, or get into business with you, or any of that type of stuff? Get in contact with you. Is there anything else we should be doing? Yeah, I mean, you know. Social media, we're out there, of course. I'm not, I'm not huge into it, but you know, we're out there. Our teams are, my team is out there. We have a media team, marketing team, and they're they're in our building, so they're throwing things out to the public all the time to try to, you know, not manipulate their mind, but to change their mind to come and see us and let them know that we're we're a good good place to be. Um, you know, the elite concierge medical is one side of it. We we own, uh, you know, Stem Cell International is is probably my largest um, my largest operating um, entity, and so. 
you know, we, we have stuff going on for that. So it's, you know, the internet, you can get on the internet, you get on Google, you can find me, this and that. You know, I've been on, uh, I'll pop up in some videos and stuff like that. MTV, I was on MTV before for for a, for a case that we helped some young lady that suffered a severe injury. But, you know, you'll find me all around. And when you find it, just click on it. And if you have any questions, you can always call or email, and I'll, I'll try to get back to you if I can. And if if, uh, if I can't, my team will get back with you. But, yeah, you know, your, your normal modes of nowadays, you know, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, you can track somebody down pretty yeah, easily if you want to. Yeah, you can get a pretty to. good beat on people pretty quickly. So Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, very good. Anything else we should be talking about before I let you go? I know you got a busy schedule always. No, no, that's, I mean, that's it. I think, uh, I think everybody should be ready for a great 2021. I think that if we let, I think if we let the media and the current numbers that flow through our phones, such as, you know, the stock market numbers and this and that, if we, if we let that close us in and hone us in and, and shut us down as a country, I think that we're really weaker than what they thought we were. I think that at this time, people should be contacting people like you. I think people should be contacting people like me. I think people should start investing money instead of in trucks and rims and, um, you know, buy new countertops for their kitchen. That's not going to change their personal life. They should give that money to a financial advisor that can free them, uh, give them freedom. People want to buy monetary idol, uh, objects, but nobody's looking for freedom, mm -hmm. right? So they want it, but they're not looking for it, right? You know, how many times you hear that? I yeah. only got this much to give you, right? right? And you're thinking, well, I looked at your, you know, your K1, like, that's not exactly true. Right. You know, what are you doing with your time? Yeah. And what are you focusing on? I hope that everybody in this country takes the time. I hope everybody worldwide takes the time to look inside themselves and not let what they've been read, fed, you know, what they read or what they've been fed change their life in 2021. I hope everybody starts to support small business. I hope everybody takes better care of themselves. I think everybody... And that's another thing is, is call it's us. It's a big deal. Get vitamins, man. I mean, look at, get vitamins. Oh, they don't work. How do you know? Yeah. You know, you work at Chrysler. I don't know if the bearings that go into that, you know, housing unit work. That's your job. What I know is this. We see transformations, whether you like it or not, you need to invest in yourself. Yeah. And you need to call people like Dan and you need to take the time to look for things other than instantaneous, you know, instant gratification right i call it instantaneously stupid because i used to be that guy and now i'm not that guy so once you find that I, I hope everybody doesn't let 2021 slip by them and let and live in a box and live in their house and not hug and kiss their family and all this stuff i understand the virus is there but there's means there's there's social distancing there's you know um whether you believe in the mask or not you can wear it i, I don't have anything to say about these things i don't want to get into that but i think everybody should look at uh, this is a chance that we all were home and we all saw the things that can happen, such as in 1918 with the Spanish flu. I think, you know, everybody else in the world felt that and they weren't as connected. Now we have the ability to change the, the social fabric of our country. I really do. I think that I think that 2021 is probably going to be the best year uh, that this country's ever seen. And if, if it's not, it's just our fault. And that's just my opinion. Yeah. Because nothing's changed, really. I mean... Well, it's slowed down enough. We should know. I mean, we need to be healthy. Like, without that, what do you have? Really? Really? I mean, you don't think that the rich guy that's on his deathbed wouldn't give it all up for another year of health? One year? Another day. Another day sometimes, yeah. I'm sure. Look at yeah. Jobs. You've read his, you've read his right. insert on, oh, on yeah. death, right? I mean, yeah. you want to talk about lightning. Right. That guy had a Yeah, grasp. just a little too late. You know? Just got it a little too late. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. right. Like I said, yeah. it's the little things. Find your pen. Sit on your it. pin. Sit on, sit on it, like it, man. It'll man. wake you up. That's a good one. The little things that cause the most amount of pain are the things that'll make you the best. Yeah. 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 And, and and like I tell people, all the stress that you're manifesting is just it's just you. Nothing's changed. Like you're still here. You're not sick and you're worried about coronavirus. Don't worry about that. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to live. You have to do what you need to do now in this space. You only have this moment. There's a train going down the tracks you might not see. Right. Coronavirus is not on that train. Find your pin, man. Awesome. Yeah. Good work. Thanks, Nikki D. Thanks, man. Always for good to talk me. to you, brother. Always great being with you, brother. Yeah, be good. Yeah. See you. Thank you. Yep. Dana Vernon offers products and services using the following business names. Creative Financial Partners, Insurance and Financial Services, Ameritas Investment Company, LLC, AIC, Member FINRA, SIPC, Security Investments, Ameritas Advisory Services, AAS Investment Advisory Services, AIC and AAS are not affiliated with Creative Financial Partners. Products and services are limited to residents of states where the representative is registered. This is not an offer securities in any jurisdiction, nor is it specifically directed to a resident of any jurisdiction. As with any security, request a prospectus from a representative read it carefully before you invest or send money. A representative will contact you to provide request information. Representatives of AIC and AAS do not provide legal or tax advice. Please consult your tax advisor or attorney regarding the situation. Whew. Thanks for watching.